You have a podcast. What the heck? I know. <laughs> what is going on with me? Dude, these, these are like stressing times. Nah, nah, it's okay. It's okay. How do I do this? Today, we're going to talk all things entrepreneurship, small business, finances, funny stories, all of the above, because we got our business owner right here, Izo Everest, Moving Vessel Auto Detail. He has given us a viral video on our YouTube channel, our most viral video up to date. I think, what, yeah, 16, yeah, yeah. 17,000 views? Yeah. Crazy number like that, yeah, right? I, I didn't think that that video was ever going to go that, the, that viral, honestly. It was a hair. Now was, you cut it, so I'm, this might not go viral, but we'll see. Honestly, I think it was a shirt, to be honest. Oh, it was a little uh, faded. It was, it was faded. It was bleached up from all the iron remover that I was using. <laughs> but uh, that shirt's now finished, and it's all gone. I don't have to worry about that shirt anymore. Yeah. Um, Looks like you're actually saving money, and you're spending a little money on yourself. So we'll talk yeah, a little bit about yeah, that. So yeah. Izar, someone's watching. They're like, who is this guy? What do you mean faded shirt, long hair? Who are you? Uh, man, I'm Izar. I'm from uh, the city of Cerritos. I was born and raised there, and that's where I started my business. Um, in the beginning, I didn't even think that this business was even going to flourish itself. I, I started it as a hobby. I was no, no, no. You started off by using our hose. Yes, yes. I would wake up in the morning. Uh, and I'm like, who is this guy? Who, what's going on? He would get our hose and start washing our, my neighbor's car with our hose, and be like, all right, thank you. Yeah, dude. Honestly, I was like very comfortable, as you could tell, with my with my friend, and um, yeah, like I don't know what I was thinking at that point. I was like, dude, you know, I'm just gonna grab his hose because he's let me use it before and I'm just going to wash his neighbor's car because, you know, at that time I was connecting to the the line, the people's uh, hose. Yeah. And then I was using their electricity. Yeah. Um, everything. Basically. And everything. Yeah. So, yeah. And then I think even your mom, like, peeked out a little and yeah. she was just like, hey, wh what's going on? <laughs> I was like, oh, oh Sway told me that I could use your hose. <laughs> but man, from from struggling times just like that, I it started it started with a like a desire to to or uh, it started as an escape. Detailing started as an escape for me. I I, I was struggling with with college and um one of the things I I was a history poli sci major for one and I had to read a lot of books and I had a I had to also write a lot of papers. So that was it was it was very overwhelming. And one thing that I remember would take that stress away was learning the art of detailing and, and, and just focusing in on like how to wash a car. And I so I started washing my own car and I started doing my dad's car and just learning how to do the simple stuff like um Watching it, I was very addicted to the Chemical Guys videos that were uh, released at that time, and um, but I, I noticed that they those videos didn't give me enough knowledge, so I started to research more. The, hence the the history poli sci degree. I'm very a fanatic of researching the things that I like, and so um, I started to dive in, and I found this guy named Larry Casilla on by from ammo nyc and i started watching his videos and they explained everything thorough on detailing um and i was i just remember i watched like car beginning series and car detailing series and it got me more enthusiastic to, to learn and i just started to ask some of my friends like hey i can take care of your car i can wash your car and they would bring it to my house and then um little by little i started to started to charge and then it just started becoming a business in, in itself um but it, yeah again it started out of a, a escape a desire to escape from the reality that i was going through but in there i found the passion and the desire to make things clean and and every time i was washing a car honestly i i was listening to an audio book or um, studying for an exam and when i would go back to college i mean i'd go back to school and ace those tests or or i would do way better than when I was not doing detailing. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, uh, a little a little time after, just continuing uh, taking care of my friends. My friends would tell their friends, and then um, neighbors would come in and, uh, and address me and be like, hey, how much do you charge? And how much are you, are you charging? And that question of charging, I started to think, I'm like, I could charge for this? I'm like, okay, yeah, let's do like... Uh, let's do 25 bucks. Like, I don't care. Like, I, I'll drive to you. I want to do this. I, I care for it. So I had a lot of many jobs where they were super dirty, super clean. Um, but at the same, I was charging the, the same rate, the, the same rate, 25 bucks and not going above that. Um, and I just had this desire to learn. So and you started off as an escape. You didn't know what to do. You, you were making a lot of mistakes because you were, 
you you got a dirty Jeep that just went through the desert. Exactly. Probably a lot of dirt. Oh, 25 yeah. bucks. And you got a Corolla that just has some dirt on the tires. 25 bucks, right? Exactly. So a lot of mistakes, but those mistakes helped you to get to where you are today. Yes, exactly. So that's good. That's good. And I feel like a lot of uh, people that start a business, they're probably like a little nervous and like, oh, man, but it, what do I go do for this? What do I go for that? It just sounds like just start and do it, right? Oh, yeah. Just like you. Now that you're not charging 25 bucks like randomly you actually have like depending on the job how long it takes the car and all that so i'm assuming with that also you've been able to manage your finances better exactly do you separate your personal from your business do you mash it all together like a little like uh, a milkshake and put all your finances all together and screw it all over oh. <laughs> that way the taxes at the end of the year are amazing yeah, yeah no I'd, I'd be drowning in debt man <laughs> but um in the beginning i honestly since it was a hobby and i was making like 25 bucks i was just socking it away because i was also a teacher's assistant at that time so it was just extra income so yeah, I didn't really think of that as um, separating my business account. No bank account, no nothing. Yeah, it's so just I, the bed, right? It was With your it, socks. It exactly. was just the mashed potatoes and the green beans and everything together. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. I'm making way more than I would yeah. at just this one job. Mm. And so um, I, as, as I started to um, detail more and I started to charge more and I started to get my finances in order, um, I was able to... Um, again, take you guys' course, and you guys were able to help me out in, in separating that as well and, uh, and teaching me that it's not, it's, it's not good to have it all together uh, rather than it's good to separate it and so that you pay yourself something and then the business can have its own... Um, its own like emergency fund yeah, almost, right? Its own, its own fund. Yeah. And um, like I can pay myself, I guess, 80% and then the business can have 20, you know? Mm. Or um, in the beginning, it's always good to give the business 80 and then you 20. Mm. Um, but as I started to move on with life, I, I started to figure it out as I went. And I started to meet cool people along the way. I was able to meet a guy that was a financial planner named Jason. Mm. Um, he helped me out tremendously as well. Um, so investing into a, a financial planner or a CPA was is going to by far take you to the next level in your business. And if you're like not knowing what to do and you're still like doing this undercover, it, it can get a little tricky just because you're not able to buy a van or you're not able to get into a shop. Or it, If you're doing it under the covers, you're not mm -hmm. allowing yourself to achieve great success. Mm -hmm. So and I knew that and I wanted to get out of that. So. I started to separate, yeah, my income, and and my ta uh, and my my business income, and also my own income, and whatever the business was making, I would just take myself, uh, I'll just pay myself whatever I need. Mm -hmm. um, reinvesting back into the business to be able to grow, right? Yeah, and in the beginning, it was like reinvesting, I, and still reinvest into my business because I I want the best tools, not not only the best tools, but I want to upgrade the tools that I need for specific jobs because. Mm -hmm. Um, not all jobs are going to be the same. Some jobs are going to require, you know, um, just a steamer. And then some jobs are just going to require an extractor. And then other jobs are going to require a polisher. So I, um, as I started to become better at detailing, I started to buy, um, I, I bought the basic stuff. I didn't buy the most expensive. 99 cent store or yeah, Dollar Tree? You know, I, I was... <laughs> I guess you would say Amazon was my best friend, okay. and then uh, the ninety-nine cent store as well. I think <laughs> O'Reilly's uh, really. I, I was I was able to go to O'Reilly's a lot, and they were pretty big um, suppliers of mine um, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so yeah, as I started to continue um, in reinvesting, I started to notice that I started getting better and. Um, so reinvesting into like f uh, getting a financial planner or reinvesting into taking trainings, um, reinvesting into uh, upgrading tools mm -hmm. and then getting a van. Because I started off with a Corolla and mm -hmm. I would go door to door and I would hook up to people's hoses mm -hmm. just like uh, I would take your hose and I would um, uh, use it for the, your neighbor's car. Not even our house. Not even <laughs> our cars. Our neighbor's yeah. cars. Yeah. It was, yeah, your neighbor's, your neighbor's cars. And she's been a really cool uh, person ever since. And. Uh, has been with me for a long time, but um, yeah, the further I started to uh, the 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 next upgrade after I started, I knew that I wanted to get out of the Corolla simply because it limited me to a lot of uh, opportunities. Mm -hmm. Because I would get DMs from people that were in apartments, people that were in um, in warehouses, H warehouses or, or in their jobs, and I couldn't mm -hmm. um, 
physically go there and hook up to whatever the business hose line is because <laughs> then it's like... They're going to get fired. Yeah, they're going to get fired or uh, something's going to happen. So I knew that I wanted to become mobile and I wanted to have a, a water tank. So I was like, like I'm going to get this. I'm going to take this. I'm going to save for this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find whatever it is. And detailing has been a beautiful place to network just because you meet these amazing people that if they are going to upgrade themselves, they'll, they'll sell you their, um, their old, tools, their old tools for a lot cheaper, or you can go on offer up, but creating those relationships are really, really, um, what you want to do. And so that's what I started doing. And I had a friend, his name was Eduardo and he literally sold me his tank, mm -hmm. um, when I was in my Corolla and I bought it like 40 bucks and wow. it helped me out a lot because I connected it and I put it in my Corolla for a while, but I didn't like it because it was leaking. Mm. So then, um, I told myself, I'm going to get a van. I'm going to get a van. I got to get out of this Corolla. And, um, when I started to, uh, save up for it, I started to figure out, um, what I wanted. I started, when I wanted the van, I started to do research on what kind of van I wanted. And I, th I thought I wanted the Ford Transit for a long time. And it was a 2011 and I would do research on like the different payments. And I was like, I could take a, I could take out a loan for this. And, uh, I went to the bank and they said I couldn't do it by myself because I was just starting. And so I had my, um, I had my mom be a co-signer for the, uh, for the loan. And, uh, I was able to get about uh, 10 grand out, which was awesome. And, um, it helped me get the van that I wanted that, that I, I didn't get the van that I wanted, but I got the, an even better offer from the van because I went to a spot. Um, I went to a dealership that was selling a van for like 11 mm -hmm. and I was like, yeah, sweet. I'll take it. But then they raised the price when I got there to 14 and I was like, oh no, we ain't going to do this. I, it's not going to fly. It, the van looks pristine, but it's not going to fly. So then I remember, um, giving up and I was just like, it was during COVID because COVID had started and I was like, man, I think I'm going to just gonna give up on this and uh, forget the idea of actually owning a van. I can do it with the Corolla. And then I kid you not, like one morning I was working out and then I just like refreshed my Craigslist and then there was a van. It was a Nissan Envy and it just had uploaded like about 13 minutes ago and it was for eight grand. And I was like, dude, this is awesome. So, um, I sent it to my mom. My mom was like, uh, my mom and my dad, they're very big on like the specific cars that I want to mm -hmm. choose. And, um, they, they say like your Japanese cars are amazing. And then, um, what, what other one? Oh, I mean, well, yeah, like Nissan and then Toyota are going to always be amazing cars to like have. So when the Nissan popped up, my mom was like, dude, get it. And so I was like, awesome. I, I'll, I'll buy it. And I remember that day I didn't skip. I, I think I, I postponed a, a client. I postponed a couple of clients for that day and I got the money out of the bank and I drove myself to the place and I was able to buy the car, uh, buy the van right then and there. And I went home with a Nissan MV and I was able to just, I threw in my, my tank. I threw in my, um, some gear, some gear and whatever. And I started to go in the van and it was like one of the most exciting moments of my life, uh, getting the van and upgrading, um, because it really did help out a lot. Yeah, no, it uh, sounds like, um, so you started off from everything you were sharing right now. So you reinvest into the business. Uh, um, you got, you said, get a CPA financial advisor, which yeah. both those things, like when you say reinvest, get tools, yeah. business expense, yep. um, any education or training, CPA, all of that business yeah. expense, yep. um, the car business expense. So these are all yeah. stuff that like, Tax if right you off. separate everything from your personal business, it's, it's a good, it's business expenses. It's not, it's not like, um, you have to take it out of your own personal bank account. But from the business, you can use it. And it's only going to improve your business, reinvest in your business. That means it's going to grow. But now that you've been a business owner for five years, you got your van, no more Corolla, you, all these great things. Uh -huh. What has been one of the most, doesn't have to be the most, but what has been one of the most difficult decisions you made as a business owner? Have you hired people, fired them? Have you say no to a client because they were being mean or something? What has been one of the most like difficult things you have done being a business owner? Because, I mean, it's not easy, okay. right? Yeah. So one of the biggest challenges for me, since I, I grew up an introvert, I, I didn't really want to um, cu cause conflict with anybody. And so I would just say yes to anything. You were uh, a yes man. I was a yes man. And it was very hard and challenging to get over that because <laughs> a lot of people would take advantage of me and uh, take advantage of my niceness. And so 
I, and I, and at that point I didn't know how to say no, but I think detailing had helped me, has helped me a lot with the many clients that I've been, uh, been around with to start to, I guess you would say, um, grow up in, in a sense of being more extroverted and being more of a, a dominant person saying, no, you know what? Actually, I cannot do it for this price. I need to do it for this price because then I don't have enough money in, to, pay to, to pay myself and to actually make this business flourish. It's not a hobby no more. No, because when you start thinking about um, the business side of things, it's it's, it's expensive. Yeah. It's, it's expensive to have a tax person. It's expensive to have... Um, to pay for gas. To pay for gas. It's expensive to pay for chemicals. Chemicals are increasing by the minute now. It's crazy. Like I remember buying some chemicals uh, a while back and they cost me $10. Now they're costing 15 to 20 to 25 bucks now to even up to 30 bucks for just a liter or even a tw third 25 ounce. You know, like it's, it's insane how, how much um, the market has gone up since COVID. Um, and it, it sucks. It, it makes me... It, it makes me not, it makes me unhappy to see that I have to raise my prices because I know that my clients really Your cherish clients. me. Yeah, my OG yeah. clients really cherish me at my, at my base price and they really have been with me for a long time. So it's very hard for me to actually address that price yeah. I, um, issue. Yeah. Even though I really care about them and I do want them to be my client for a long time and I do want them forever because they've been super cool with me. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to address that sometimes because you, you, you have to. You've created that bond, but yeah. you do. You have to in order to succeed and to thrive, and um, especially since this is a luxurious business and this is an art, um, I think that it's only reasonable to do so. Yeah, I think for any small business owner, I think that's probably the hardest decision they have to make. They got their clients that's you know like you. You start off getting people's water holes. Yeah. Those same clients now they have a water tank. They're used to your twenty five dollars, right? Yeah. Now it's fifty, sixty, eighty, yeah. even a hundred. Yeah. So you, I feel like that's the hardest decision a business owner has to do is like raise prices over time because not only are, is everything more expensive, but you're better. Uh -huh. You're not the same as are four years ago, but your skills no. are better. You're even certified in a couple of things, right, as a detailer. Yeah. So it's yeah. like all those things add to your resume. I feel like it's hard. You maybe might lose some clients, but yeah. you also gain some. Some new ones. Some new ones, some yeah. Some great ones too. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's, that's one of the things that... Um, I, it gets me excited because even though the, a door closes, I know that a door is going to open or a door will open soon or it does open. And I'm like, oh, sick. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because I remember when, yeah, people were rejecting me and not accepting my my high price or my mm -hmm. $60 price for a base wash, you know, and um, or not accepting that um, I have to, they have to buy a detail for me in order to be on my maintenance plan, you know, mm -hmm. like I not... In the beginning, it was hard, but when I started to do it more and more and get more comfortable and get more comfortable with selling, um, one of the biggest things that I would tell them is like, hey, my washes are not basic. I don't do a car wash style. And the car washes right now are charging 25 bucks to even up to like this much. Um, like the machine yeah, ones, right? Yeah, and they're scratching your car. And there is a hand wash, 100% hand wash is always going to be better for your vehicle. Mm -hmm. And so um, when I started to learn how to sell, I started to... Um, tell them in a, in a way that I have one help them. Yeah, the benefits and, and a way of helping them. And they were always like, you know what? Yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's book it in next week. Let's book it in tomorrow. Let's book it in this. You started off with yeah. the benefits, not necessarily the pricing. Like, let's not focus too much on the pricing. Let me yeah. tell you, by you paying this, this is where you're going to get. Yeah. Which is a good skill to have as yeah. a business owner. Exactly. You want them to know about the benefits and know why they're choosing you exactly. to do this. Because like you said, it's luxurious. Like people... Not most people are going to pay to have someone come and wash a car at uh -huh. their job or their house. So it's it's a luxury, right? It's like oh, yeah. having someone cut your hair at your house. You know, it's the same thing. It's like you're going to have to pay more. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's obvious. And, and I remember that uh, one difficult moment where someone um, had asked me like, hey, um, can you come do my car? You're doing my neighbors. Can you come do my car? Um, and can you do it for 25 bucks? And I was like, oh, uh, I'm sorry. Like, I can't do that. Um, and it was hard for me to say no to that person because I've, I've, I've been a friend to them and I've been, I, you know, I say hi to them. But um, there's, there's one time where they just couldn't stop um, being, they were, they were persistent in asking me. Um, and to one day where I was just like, you know what, ma'am, um, I can't do it for $25 because it's not going to put food on my plate. And it's not going <laughs> to, and honestly, I don't, I don't think that you would like it if your employer would reduce your pay wage as well. So please don't try to reduce mine. 
and this is just me trying to be successful in what I want, and this is exactly what I love doing. So help me be successful in doing this. But other than that, I just I can't I can't take you on as a client, and I can't take you on as a um, to as a detail like, to do your detail. Yeah. So um, and I need to learn how you have to, to know your yeah. value and your worth, right? Yeah. yeah, 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 because exactly, like, this is not a hobby, you're not a student anymore and have another job, this is what you do full time, this is your business, yeah. and, and you're married now, from last yeah. time we talked, exactly, you're not just you, it's, yeah. you have someone else, I'm taking care of another person as well, yeah, so and it's like two people, you have your own place, so it's yeah. like, real bills now, yeah. right, so, it's, it's a difficult decision, but you have to take those decisions, um, um, you, you already talked about some challenges and overcoming them, you know, pricing. I think that's the hardest thing about like, yeah. even, like especially like solo entrepreneurs when you're almost by yourself, right? You're doing like a service type of business, haircuts, yeah. washing, financial planner, taxes, anything like that. You have to know your value. Um, has there been ever a time where it's, you know, a funny moment in your business where it's like, damn, you made a big mistake or someone something happened where it was just like hilarious and like you'll never forget this funny moment? Ah, oh, man. I guess uh, some funny moments that I, I, I look back right now and I laugh at is there's uh, a couple of times where I've fallen off a ladder and um, oh. it's like embarrassing and I just hope that nobody has seen me do that. It does hurt the body, but at the same time, I was like, you know what, this is, it, it's funny. It, I fell off a ladder. Um, another funny mo mo moment or um, how, what, what would be like another one that would Something, maybe you made a big mistake, you scratched someone's car or something like that? <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess, so uh, some, in the detailing world, one of the things that people get afraid of is, to be honest, burning paint mm. and, and learning. And for me, I wanted to dabble into wet sanding and I wanted to learn um, paint corrections just because I would, I would see these uh, Instagram detailers. Transformations, and, right? Dude, they would, they would create these glossy, glossy cars. One of my, one of my all time favorite detailers on Instagram has to be Detail Thugga. Um, he has insane work and he's from England. Um, and, and I wanted to replicate his work. Um, and I, I would see some videos on wet sanding and that would perfect and remove any sort of swirls. Um, so I would do that and, and some of the cars without any like training and anything and I messed up and I burnt the paint and those moments I was like, oh my gosh, like how, how could I do that? Um, I, I, I should be the detail, I should be the professional, I need to know this. And, um, but one thing that I, that, I, that I held to myself is always be honest even if it leads you to your death, you know? So I kind of was just like, oh, I don't want to tell client. the client. But I was like, I'm going to tell the client. And so I went to the client and I explained to them like, hey, I burnt your paint and I didn't think that this was going to happen. And um, they were not upset, actually. They were actually very happy that I was honest. And um, one of the things that I had told them, I was like, you know what? Uh, I don't want to leave here like not fixing the problem. Let's fix the problem. I, I have a friend that is a, a body shop guy and if we can go with him like it'd be awesome I can pay I'll pay for the I'll pay for the rec uh, recovery mm. and um, so we were able to make that happen and I did that kind of twice <laughs> but um, I have had employees and one uh, employee had scratched one of the cars of uh, of a lady that's um, very, very OCD. And, um, you know, it's good to have some of those clients that are just like, hey, what's this, what's this, what's this, what's this? Because it grows your um, knowledge on Keep leaving you accountable. the car. Yeah, it keeps me accountable to leave the car perfect so that when the next client comes, it's like, okay, I'm thinking about this client because uh, I need to think about this client and how they like their car. Yeah. Because if they like it this pristine and I'm taking my time this much and, I want to leave. A, I want them to leave a good review. Mm -hmm. I got to do the best. Yeah. So I'll, I'll 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 do the best, and I'll think of the those clients that I have mm -hmm. that are like that. And um, that happened. Um, he scratched the car, and I was stressed, and I was very scared. And so it had I, to be that client, huh? Yeah, and, and it had to, and it had to. But I remember. Um, what do I have to lose? I, I did it. I've done it before, and I'm just gonna be honest and confront it, and then hopefully they can um, be able to travel to my to my body shop guy. And so we were able to get it squared away, and I just remember that that lady gave my body shop guy a very hard time, very hard <laughs> time, because I think he had to redo it twice. 
Damn. because how how perfectionist this person is about the things that they want. And it's good to have those people in life, honestly. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, I I laugh about it now, and I'm just like, wow. I'm glad that I've moved forward and I'm not doing work like that anymore. And I was able to reinvest into a class um, by Legend, and he was able to teach me the wet sanding um, experience. And honestly, the best class that I've ever taken. So reinvest into your business. Um, it's okay to have those crazy, super perfectionist clients because they're only going to push you. Yeah. And they're going to be uh, keep you accountable. Mm -hmm. So that's good. And be honest, right? Like you said, if you make a mistake, because you are going to make mistakes, especially if you're in a service type business where you perform a service or you do some sort of counseling or something, right? Um, it's not always going to come out perfect. Yeah. So <laughs> you have to be honest. Yeah. Um, now, I, I know you talk about challenges. I know you talk about, you know, different stuff. You know, we're almost going to wrap up, but I, I would like to know what's the biggest compliment you've received or the biggest tip you received from a customer or a client? Oh, man. Um you know, the biggest compliments are always when the clients look at the end uh, at the end results of their car and they look at me and they're like, wow, you've turned my car back to life. And it's like brand spanking new. Like it just came out of the lot. I love it. Thank you so much. And other clients that um, always tell me like, hey, like, I just want you to know that we, we appreciate you coming every week to detail the vehicles or to maintenance them because it really does help us out as a family. You know, life can get crazy. And us, since we have kids, we're always moving around. And honestly, coming into a clean car after you washed it, has it's, it's, it's the best feeling. Mm -hmm. And that right there hits home all the time because um, I guess as a kid growing up, um, I've always wanted to have that. Mm -hmm. Like that, that feel good moment where a person really appreciates what I do. Mm -hmm. And um, I never really got that growing up because it was very hard to, to, to reach compliments because, you know, one was soccer, trying to, trying to outwork everybody, but still being looked, not looked to as like the first person on the team. Or like even to like, I guess you would say it to my, to my father, when I was young, I would want to do things that would, um, that I would want to, Try to he, impress him? Yeah, I would want to impress him, but nothing would really much impress him as a as, when I was growing up. Now, like, things have been better, and, and actually we're working together now, which has been some, one, one of the best experiences ever. Um, he does a postery, and I'm learning, learning a little bit about that now. And um, he is guiding me, and he's coming to help me with detailing as well. So it's kind of we're building our relationship back, and I think it's just going to go – it's just going to be better and mm -hmm. better and better. But um, one of the biggest tips, on the other hand, I have to say, this guy is one of my favorite clients, and he will always um, be my client just because of um, because of how he is. Um, the most generous guy that I've, I've ever met. Um, I'm just going to say his name. His name's Ruben. Um, and... I do his cars on a weekly basis on Thursdays, and he has blessed me with so much. And we need we, when you're a business owner, you you want to have a good client, and you want to have replicate. You want to have a clientele base that's kind of like him, you know, that's never judging, but correcting. You know, like he corrects my work sometimes, but he doesn't get mad. He he literally sends me a text, hey yo, like you, you maybe missed one of these things that, but I really like it when you do this. Can you please like um, make this better? And next week I'm like, whoa, like sometimes you you reach burnout in this industry, and sometimes your work does slack. Things, yeah. But when you have those compassionate clients that are like, you know what, like we forgive that. Let's let's be better this week, okay? And then I I I become better. I, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly that guy that like takes that criticism and becomes better the next time because you believe in me, you know? Mm -hmm. And there was one time, well, the first time that he hired me, he had paid me $300 as tip, wow. as tip, just flat tip on top of what he paid me that day. And then, um, even that same year, um, on Christmas day, I never expected anything or I don't expect money from clients, but this guy gave me $500 like literally out of the blue. And he said, God bless. He's like, be blessed. Like, thank you. Mm -hmm. And $500 sent to my, to my, to my um, bank account. It, it honestly wowed me. And not only that, there was another experience with the same client where I was detailing his cars and he had pulled me to the side and he's like, hey, if you ever need, 
a, a blessing. If you ever need something, let me know. And actually, you know what, Izar, I, I want to give you whatever, what, 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 what's the number that you want? There was one time where he actually told me that. And I, I remember I was just like, I don't need anything. As long as you provide work for me, I am good because I really want to work and I really appreciate um, your business. I really appreciate you. Like no amount of money can like <laughs> mm -hmm. do that. And, and so, but I remember just like walking back to my van and just started crying because I was like, why is there, why is, I can't believe that there's people like this that want to help me succeed and want to see me succeed mm -hmm. and really appreciate what I do in the community. Mm -hmm. And, um, those are the moments that I always hold tight when I feel like giving up. Mm -hmm. Like I think about, um, I think about him. I think about the people that have given me the best compliments and that helps me want to push myself to reinvest. And that helps me, um, push myself to become a better detailer. And there was a detail, there's, there's actually a client that had told me like, Izar, we want you to be the best. We actually want you to be the best because, um, it, it would help us. It, I, I, I'm, I would be proud that my detailer is one of the best in LA. And, um, when I heard that, it also drives me and I'm like, you know what? I am going to try to be the best. And there's things that I do have that I need to work on. Uh, communicating has been one of the biggest, like also difficulties of mine, because again, I am an introvert and sometimes I have to think, I, I think very thorough about what is going to go on throughout the week. So I have to think about how am I going to, what time I'm going to squeeze this person in, mm -hmm. uh, how much time is this detail going to take so that if I don't have time, like I cannot squeeze him in, you know? So yeah, it's, it's, like those are those are things that I just need to fix on myself in in terms of like becoming a better entrepreneur, um, and I think that if I if I continue to push myself beyond my limits, um, I could I could potentially be um, I I, I want to be the best detailer in LA. Yeah, no, that's a great example. I think that's something a small business owner that wants to start or is a business mm -hmm. owner is probably looking forward to is having that one, two or three clients like like that one that you just shared right now that mm -hmm. not only does it give you work or business, but you know, it goes the extra mile, gives you some amazing tips, advice, and bless you on Christmas, which is really, really nice. Yeah. Now, as we wrap up, last thing I would love to ask, because someone's watching they might be you in high school or in college where they're like, oh, I have a hobby. I'm starting a business. I don't know if I want to go full time, try to keep the college route, but I don't know if I'm going to really use this long term. Um, what is something someone should look forward to when starting your own business? What is like, why would you prefer all day, every day to do this than to maybe work for someone nine to five, Monday to Friday? Oh, man, um, one of the things that I would give you an advice is like, Honestly, becoming an entrepreneur is one of the best things in the world, just simply because um, nobody controls your salary. You control your salary. And I think that um, if you do take the venture off into being an entrepreneur, um, one thing that you're going to leave behind is having to try to please people um, to reach a specific job title and climbing the ladder. Because many times when I was... Um, just working for a nine to five. I remember wanting to be the best, but always being underlooked. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, nobody appreciates my hard work. Nobody appreciates that I get to work and I actually want to work. Nobody appreciates that. And I'm not getting a raise and I'm not getting any, any sort of like reward. I'm not getting a certificate. So why am I doing this? Why am I trying to, why am I trying so hard and not being looked? You know what? I'm going to start to believe in myself. I'd rather, I'd rather turn that 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 around instead of like looking for other people's approval and instead of like trying to climb the ladder that way i'm going to try to climb, climb the ladder as as my for myself because i know that people will believe in me i know that people do believe in me i know that people stand by beside me and um even when i fail like people are there to comfort me you know mm -hmm. so i i'll i turn that back and i started taking it full on where i just started to work 100 percent for myself and honestly i I need to believe in myself. I need to, I need to believe that I can do this and I can make this successful. So a hundred percent rule number one is believe in yourself. And if you don't want to, um, focus on trying to reach a salary for another company, um, 
just try to challenge yourself. See how much you can make in one year. Push yourself. No, that's the sky's the limit. That's that's amazing. That's great because a lot of people don't believe in themselves. But by them hearing what you just said right now, maybe they're gonna start to believe in themselves and they're gonna open that business. So they're gonna start that side hustle that eventually will become a business because eventually you're gonna have kids. You're gonna leave behind a legacy, right? You're gonna be like, hey. I'm wearing my dad's merch. This is, yeah. you know, his. Uh, I'm sure you're going to take your kids on with you, right, to watch cars. They're probably not going to like it. <laughs> yeah. They're probably going to hate it. Why are you waking us up so early? But one day you'll be able to experience that, that maybe not many people are able to do because you can't bring your kids to work, right, mm -hmm. <laughs> for most jobs. But if you're able to do something like that, that's, that's a cool little benefit right there. And I think this has been a great conversation. You know, you shared a lot of great stuff about your business, about your experiences, your ups and downs, your... Um, things that are going to help someone that's uh, start wanting to start a business has a business and i think it's a great story because it's just the beginning you know yeah. five years is not much in a business you have so much more years to grow to learn to develop to just just become you know a better business owner because yeah. that's the goal right to get better every year and to not limit yourself you know like you said the sky's the limit exactly and and you went through our course you know you went through our you know uh, ideal wealth academy which i know um <laughs> In the, in the last video, you said it was the best experience ever, which is a huge compliment yeah. to us. And thank you for that. And that's our goal and mission here at the nonprofit. Yeah. You know, regardless who you are, your backgrounds or anything, we just want to help people better understand finances. Their, regardless of their cultural background, their education or anything, regardless if you're an entrepreneur or not, stay at home mom, yeah. college student, that you could take this basic financial knowledge and put it into your life. You know, basic things like, you know, start an emergency fund. Yeah. Emergency fund. Uh, come and go, emergencies come and go, and having all that knowledge to be able to build generational wealth, that mm -hmm. way one day you could pass it on to your kids and your kids could pass it on to their kids, and that's all we want, Yeah. right? Because um, a lot of times the problems in life come from money, whether it's divorces and you know marriages, whether it's fights between siblings and family yeah. members, or even at work or whatever it is. So having this financial knowledge and having, hearing stories like yourself, because we want our, uh, this podcast and everything we do at the nonprofit to be a uh, platform for voices like yourself because you know yeah. not only are i know our name is avance latino which we serve everyone but you yourself are latino and you're, you're striving you have a business you're an entrepreneur and you went through our program so it's like it's really rewarding to see people like yourself and be able to make this platform um, available to other business owners as well so if you're watching and you have a business owner and you want to be on here let us know hit us up and we'd love to showcase your business kind of like ezar's business already yeah. and who knows, it might go viral. You know, he got some DMs from people in the Midwest. <laughs> yeah, no, <it> <laughs> All crazy. over the country. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a, it's a great experience. Thank you again, Isa, for being um, on the show. Um, the first of many that we're going to have, you know, many business owners, many different individuals, great individuals like yourself. And, yeah, it's fun. We love to do this. And, you know, again, my name is Josh Rincon, Program Director here at uh, Manza Latino, the nonprofit. And we got our boy, Isa Alvarez at... Uh, moving vessel auto detail how can they find you on the socials right before we finish just just that they want to search you up all right so yeah you can find me on uh, instagram moving vessel auto detailing um and then you can also find me on tiktok uh, at moving vessel and then um you can also find me on youtube yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah that's great that's great you can find them everywhere and you can go and you know maybe we'll link up the video somewhere or something the other video we did we, we, where he had longer hair so you might not recognize yeah. him but that video went pretty viral so that was a really cool experience we shot it in downtown Long Beach but thank you again Izar yeah. thank you for everyone that's watching you know please be sure to subscribe hit that like button turn on that notification bell share it with your friends and family because I know this is really you know motivational to watch and be able to learn more about a young entrepreneur uh, like yourself or like you said in the other video a young jet like yourself right yeah yeah <laughs> a young jet a young jet that wants to start a business so <laughs> take care everyone and thank you for joining the show today all right all right bye <laughs>
Um, but just the, the, a lot of the cars that I actually do like, um, and simply, I, 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 I drive a lot of my clients' cars. My clients just give me the keys and I get to just roam around and drive in them. Um, I love driving. There's one time where I actually took um, my client Ruben all the way to his work and then he told me to drive the car all the way back to the house. Dude, oh, that was an that's experience. a lot of trust. Dude, yeah, it's trust. a Range Rover. Uh, it was a nice Range Rover and that car is so smooth. Uh, so uh, the, the Range Rover Discover, I think that's what it's called. It's really, really an awesome car. I really like that. I think that those are the, those are some of, one of my, some of my favorite cars that I've driven and, or done work on. Those are some nice cars. What is the worst or hardest car to detail? Toyotas, man. Toyota Corollas, Toyota RAV4s, whatever, you name it. Toyotas have the ugliest carpets in the world. They just, they don't, it just doesn't, it's a headache. Yeah. So, but their, their exteriors are pretty nice, but just really, really soft paint. So, easy to work with. It's the only reason why, but uh, they're terrible, but yeah. <laughs>